What's up, Brian Song here, and welcome to the Apple Buy for all the good and bad inside the world of Apple. Now, the Steve Jobs biography has had people flipping through the pages to find out what's next for Apple. And if you guess designer turtlenecks, you're probably wrong. But if you guess Apple TV, you might be right. Now, in the book, SJ tells Walter Isaacson, I'd like to create an integrated television set that's completely easy to use. It would be seamlessly synced with all of your devices and with iCloud. No longer would users have to fiddle with complex remotes for DVD players and cable channels. It will have the simplest user interface you could imagine. I finally cracked it. Now you can bet this reignited the Apple TV rumors and the New York Times claims the new interface that will get rid of clunky remotes will be Siri. The Times reports that Apple officials knew as far back as 2007 that they wanted to make a dedicated TV. And their sources also claimed a year ago that there were large parts floating around for Apple's prototype supply chain that looked like they could be parts of an Apple TV as well. Now, it doesn't appear that a standalone Apple TV is still coming anytime soon, but analysts are guessing by the end of 2012 for a 2013 release. Now, another way you might be able to control your TV could be with the use of hand gestures after a patent application from Apple was made public and specifically points to hands-off control on devices like the iPhone and iPad without touching the device. Now, the goal is to minimize the need to physically interact with these devices because of their smaller size, but we could also see this being applied to larger screens as well. Now, in other future Apple product news, how could we not mention the iPad 3? CNET reports from sources that one of the biggest challenges for manufacturers is making a dense 10.1-inch screen with a retina display-like resolution. Now, currently, LG and Samsung can get displays that are twice the resolution of the iPad 2, but the challenge is making large quantities to meet Apple's demands for a product that's really a quantum leap in pixel density. And if they can't do it, we can all get excited for the iPad 2S. All right, let's take a quick break and check out our iPhone app of the week. It's Halloween and everyone is carving pumpkins, so why not check out the Carve a Pumpkin app? It's free and you'll pick a pumpkin, choose to carve out a face, and send a picture to your friends. And trust me, it's a lot better than embarrassing yourself. Oh. Up the pipe and done my pumpkin. Wow, that's really good. Look, look at my Egyptian pyramid. <laughs> yeah. Ryan, that's a triangle. What? No, no, in, in my textbook, in um... No, that's a big, sloppy isosceles triangle. See, now, do you want that to happen to you? Look, just check out the app and it's something fun during the Halloween season. All right, Apple delivered some treats early this week with speed bumps to the entire MacBook Pro line, graphics card improvements for both the 15-inch and 17-inch Pros, and larger hard drive capacity options on all models. Now, the form factors remain the same, and it's an incremental bump, so the only people who should be mad are the ones who bought one within the past month or so. Also, Apple released updates to its iPad smart covers with interior colors that now match the exterior colors for the leather ones. Woo! And they replaced the throw up orange cover with a dark gray color. All right, on to the quick bite. Steve Jobs' book is likely to be the top selling book of 2011, according to Amazon. And when a book sells this well, usually a movie follows. Earlier this month, Sony Pictures acquired the movie rights to Walter Isaacson's biography. And the writer they're targeting is Aaron Sorkin, known for writing the West Wing TV series A Few Good Men, the Facebook movie, and most recently, Moneyball. Now, Apple's expected to debut a new pilot program that will let customers purchase products from Apple's online store and pick them up in person at one of their retail stores. It'll be limited to select stores and roll out to more locations later, so look out for that. And finally, we have another Apple Byte giveaway for all of you. Our good friends at Griffin Technology, who make tons of Apple accessories, are hooking you up with these two really cute and soft, fluffy things called the Woogie 2. It's called the world's first huggable case for your iPhone and iPod Touch, and I'm not going to argue with them on that. Now we have one blue and one pink one to give away, so send us an email to the Applebyte at CNET.com showing us how you would hug a Woogie if you or the kids you want it for could have one. And if you don't win, check out this online code for 15% off of everything at griffintechnology.com. That's good throughout the middle of November. All right, that's going to do it for this week's show. Thanks for watching. I'm Brian Tong, and we'll see you next week for another Bite of the Apple. Ding, 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 Triangle. Ding, ding. Okay, well, uh, this was fun, Brian. Uh, I gotta go. Wait, where are you going, uh, man? Triangle.